Intel 12th gen and 13th gen CPUs are honestly amazing. They have a lot of features and capabilities that no one else can match. And a big thing is DDR4 and DDR5 support. But is there really a massive drawback and difference in running DDR4 and DDR5? Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here, and today we will be testing DDR4 and DDR5 on my 13900K. DDR5 has gotten really good, especially with 13th gen and the introduction of Hynix 8i, which is where you're seeing that really high performance, high frequency RAM come from. Last week, I got a brand new motherboard, and that was the Z790 Tachyon. I traded a supporter in my Discord for my 10900K for this board, and Let's just say this board has been great. This Tachyon allowed me to do 7800 megahertz with ease. So we are going to be comparing 7800 CL36. I'm not going to post the timings just because they are available in my discord for my supporters. If you're interested, hit the link down below the $5 and up tier, tier two in bankroll. Do get access to my OC guide where you can learn how to overclock yourself. And for the DDR4 board, we have the Z690A Pro. This is my old DDR4 board I had. This has 32 gigabytes of dual rank BDI on it. This was running at 4200 CL16, which is honestly really good. And for the price of this board, that's actually pretty good. Let's actually talk about the pricing now. So I just compared like two kind of good DDR4 and DDR5 that are very cheap setups. So take that into consideration when I'm talking about this. So for motherboard, I have the Z690 Edge Wi-Fi Mini. This is an ITX board. I used to actually run an ITX board back a couple of years ago. These are good, but you are losing some expandability. I think your next best option might be like a cheap dark or tachyon. So that might be a little bit more, maybe about $50 more, I'd say. So take that into mind when I'm talking about this right here. And then I got 6600 CL34. This is just guaranteed RAM. Obviously, if you want higher speeds, you're going to have to pay for them, but this is going to work on any board and it's guaranteed to be 8i, which is the main reason I, per I selected it. And then for the DDR4, I did the Z690-P. It's basically a Z690-A. They overclock the exact same. And then for the memory, the HP V10 RGB, because obviously you need your RGB. This is 3200 CL14. You are going to need to overclock both of these kits to actually get correct performance. If you want to overclock and you don't know how to and you want me to overclock it, link down below. You can get my optimization service and I'll fully overclock your system for you just in case you're interested. But what's the price difference between these two? You're getting about a 70% price difference, which that might sound like a lot, but I'm going to tell you why maybe the price isn't all you need to think about. Obviously, if you're significantly budget constrained, take everything out. But if you're not budget constrained and you really want this PC to last a while or to kind of get that better value going down the line, you really are going to want to go DDR5. 13th gen is the last DDR4 CPU. So any CPUs past this will need DDR5, meaning that if you want to upgrade to the latest 14th gen when they come out in a couple of months, you are going to actually need to have DDR5. And if you buy DDR5 now, you choose to upgrade later down the road, even if it's not 14th gen, if it's any kind of CPU, you're going to be able to just reuse the RAM. And that's going to save you money when you're going for a brand new build. So definitely think about that when you are trying to purchase a new PC. You also get to flex on your friends that you have high speed RAM, which is way more, way more important than anything. We don't do this for the FPS. We do this literally to flex on your friends and hardware bot. But now let's actually see what kind of FPS differences are we getting between maxed out DDR5, 7800 CL36, maxed out DDR4, 4200 CL16. All subs and tertiary timings were tuned. This is on my maxed out 13900K and my RTX 4090 running at a max overclock as well. So the only difference is the RAM. That's all that mattered. Before we get into the benchmarks, I just want to say all of these were done in 1080p low settings. The only difference is Cyberpunk 2077 with the Ultra RTX preset with DLSS disabled. Um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider was done at 1080p as well with the stock settings, no DLSS, Rift Breaker, DX11 stock settings. The competitive games like Fortnite 
and MW2 and Siege were all done, all those settings. We're going to start off here with the synthetics. Here we have Intel Memory Latency Checker with the bandwidth test. And boom, DDR5 blows DDR4 out of the water. You should 100% expect this with the difference in frequencies. You're getting almost 60 more gigabytes. You're almost doubling your bandwidth with DDR5. So if you're doing like a bandwidth intensive workload or something that really hits your RAM in a game, this is going to notice a difference. Here's the latency. Honestly, the latency is the exact same. Are you going to notice the difference between 44 nanoseconds and 44.1 nanoseconds? No, I promise you, you're not. If you do, you are coping. Okay, now we have Time Spy Extreme, the CPU test. This is just the CPU score. I did not put the combined score because we don't really care about the graphics card at all. When comparing it to the CPU test, you're getting about 400 more points, about 2.7% higher score going to DDR5. This is a really big deal. Like, obviously, if you're an XOC guy, 400 points is really nice. But noticing that 2.7% is something that in a game you might actually kind of notice that slightly better performance. Next up, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The average FPS, really the differences aren't insane. You're getting about 15-ish more FPS, which yes, that is a big deal getting 15 more FPS in averages. But look at those lows. You're gaining 24 more FPS in the lows. And the difference between 220 and 246 FPS in the lows that might not be a big deal right now. Like let's say if you're getting that in the lows, but let's say you get into a really demanding kind of area where you're getting, you know, dips really hard. You're not gonna get that hard of a dip on DDR5. You're still gonna get that dip, but just not as much. Now on to Rift Benchmark. And this game is one of those games where it loves RAM bandwidth. I don't know why, but this game loves RAM bandwidth. I think it's just kind of how the game is. These kind of games, the type they are you are gonna notice a massive difference in the FPS. I mean, the numbers say for itself, would you rather have 127 FPS in the lows versus 88? That's gonna be a massive difference in the smoothness. Don't even, like, the average, obviously you're gonna notice that, but like, the lows are so much better on DDR5 that you are going to notice that 100%. Here we have Cyberpunk 2077. This was done in Ultra RTX with DLSS disabled, but, this game I did because I want to see how much RTX really does change it and how much like a fully GPU out, GPU bound scenario is affected by DDR5. And the average FPS is about 4 FPS higher with DDR5. The Sorry, that's the max FPS. Average FPS is about the same with the min FPS. Getting a slight win for DDR4, about 2-ish percent. I'm going to call this one honestly just a tie because they kind of just, they, they're neck and neck. It's so close that if you're able to push your DDR4 and your DDR5, both of them are going to be about the same. Here we have Siege, and this game is a definitive win for DDR4. This honestly shocked me, but once again, I say this in every video where I benchmark Siege and compare it, it's 1000 FPS. If you cannot compete and cannot be good with 1000 FPS, that slight 30-40 FPS boost isn't going to help you at all. and these games, this game's just so optimized. It doesn't matter what you throw at it. This is, it doesn't matter. You can go with either of them. Here we have Fortnite. This was tested with an actual replay. So I did play a game and then I went into the replay settings and tested it that way. And DDR5 basically just destroys DDR4. This is kind of the same way as Rift Breaker in those kind of performances. You're gaining a good bit more in the lows you're gaining about 40 ish fps which is something that you're going to notice you're going to notice a massive fps boost in the lows that's what you want you want your lows as high as possible and then average fps obviously 200 versus 230 is going to be a big difference like you're going to notice that and the last game we have is modern warfare 2. It's so close that it's a tie. You can say DDR5 wins because it gets two more FPS sometimes, three more FPS. But to be honest, it's the exact same thing. I need to start going into the actual game to test in Warzone because the benchmark I feel like doesn't really show differences that much. Even though it is repeatable, it can't really show a difference successfully. And there we have it. Do I recommend DDR4 or DDR5? The choice is basically up to you in my opinion. I'm going to say for most people going forward, DDR5 is the way to go. 
it is going to be the more smart upgrade is what I'm going to say. You're going to have a lot more future proofness. You can overclock these as well. You're just going to keep getting better as the memory controllers and the motherboards get better as well. You need to think about that. DDR4 is on its last legs. Like if you buy DDR4 brand new now in a year, you're not going to be able to put it in any new system. That is something you need to think about. If you want to be able to continue to upgrade your system and bring some parts with you, you're going to need to get DDR5. I will leave links down below to some DDR5 motherboards as well as a good DDR4 kit if you are interested. Affiliate links so they do support the channel. If you guys do want me to continue making this content, hit that like button down below, subscribe, comment if you're using DDR4 or DDR5 by the way. If you want to support me, the link is also down below. But I hope you guys have enjoyed. <laughs>